So, oh, hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Talking Wheels podcast. It's the weekly speedway podcast that comes out to you every Saturday. I'm your host, Michael Wright, writer 74 on Twitter, and, uh, and I'll let my co host introduce herself. Hi, I'm Lynn Murray, and I'm a Glasgow Tigers fan, and I've followed Speedway for a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> and a secret investigator, but we'll, we'll you'll find out more about that later, perhaps. Uh, private investigator, and our, our guest today, then. So, um, really pleased to have this man on, a young fellow who's just uh, hoping to kind of make some tracks. Unfortunately, out of action at the moment, but we'll we'll find out more about him, how he's getting on. Um, hopefully, he has a big future in the sport. And um, from people that I've talked to, he's a likable fellow, a likable character. And it's Ben Trigger. So, hi, Ben, and um, and welcome. Hi, yeah. Uh, um... Thank you for having me on. Um, it's going to be uh, a real pleasure to be talking to you guys. Uh, the place is ours. The place is ours. So, so how are you doing? I know that uh, obviously you, you're kind of having an enforced break at the moment, really, aren't you? But how are you getting on with stuff? Yeah, you know, um, I took a fall at the Isle of Wight on the 7th of July, um, which we later found out was a the top of the broken leg or the tibia so um just kind of sat in a leg brace I had surgery on the 15th so I'm just uh trying to build my leg back up and try to speed up as much as possible so you know I'm trying to walk around and you know build my muscles back up and I've been doing a few oxygen tank therapy just to try to speed up the process as well so um it's mainly just a recovery process but I'm just itching to get back on the bike already. So, um, yeah, just staying in the loop and uh, trying to get to as many meetings as I can to watch. Right. Yeah, and you're, you're busy later on today, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so today we're going to my local football club at Fribble Park Girl, uh, to go and show off Speedway and try and get some new fans down there. And then I think I'm doing the same tomorrow as well at a different venue, so... Yeah, so although I'm not Ryan, I'm still, you know, trying to promote Speedway and get it out there. So Yeah, it's a big club, Plymouth Argyle, isn't it? I know it's in, I think it's in League One, isn't it? But it, they're playing Barnsley today, but they often get kind of well over 10,000 fans there, don't they? Yeah, so obviously with the game today, um, I was speaking to Dad about tickets and stuff earlier. I said, do, do we get to watch the game as well? And he's like, yeah, I was like, oh, it's fine. Um, now, yeah, but apparently it's a sellout crowd today, so hopefully we should have a lot of interest at the souls. I mean, we've got the the mascot from the Speedo Maximus going down as well. We, I think our bike's going down, um, a few other bikes going down, and we're also taking their GB banner down just to show off um, what it is without you know, having to talk as well. Are you, are you into football yourself anyway, Ben? Is that something that you've, you're interested in? Uh, when I was younger, I used to play a lot of football. Um, I always said to Dad, that, because that's when uh, Plymouth Speedway rode on Fridays, I always said to Dad that I was going to uh, ride Speedway on Friday and then go play football for Liverpool on Saturday. But as I've got older and Speedway's become more more of my life, um, football's just kind of been something I watch on TV now. Yeah, I don't think Liverpool would let you race Speedway, would they? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I saw it's funny I saw you you had like um, some stuff on Facebook I think talking about going to Plymouth and you had some pictures there of the stuff you bring in and I scrolled through them and then it just suddenly went to your x-rays and pictures of your injury and I think yeah. and I, and I thought oh man you're not putting those up at the stall are you just to show everyone just how big a sport it is but that'd be interesting though wasn't it because we we often talk on here about how Speedway is probably one of the last proper dangerous sports, really. You know, there's a lot of things that have been made very safe over the years, things like Formula One and whatever else. But, um, you know, you really are kind of taking life and limb with you, aren't you? I mean, in, in terms of you, you know, as a, as a younger guy and just kind of, for your age group, there's not going to be many people you know who are kind of laid up with your, you know, your leg up and stuff like that. Do you, do you have mates who kind of, you know, wonder why you got into it and wonder about the danger of it? Um, you know, you've always got people like, why, why have you chosen Speedway? And, you know, I came from a motocross background as well. So obviously I have a lot of motocross friends and you, know, you see them injured at the same time. But obviously motocross, well, you, you could say motocross is more dangerous because you have jumps, more riders and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, you know, I've got like friends outside the question why I do speed it. It's like how because I've seen that they're like football or you know they do something else like scooters, bikes. They they do something else, but they're like what, like if they watch speed, they're like like that's just mad because I've seen they they say no brakes, no fear. Yeah, so, yeah. So obviously they're just they're. They think it's mad that I ride speedway, but you know, that they, they understand why I love it so much. So, and, and in terms of how you got into it, then I mean, I think you, your dad's a biker anyway, isn't he? Isn't he's you've come from a family that is involved? Uh, well, dad tried to ride speedway, um, a few I think twice before I was born. Uh, I think he was he rode at St. Austell and Milton Keynes. I think, or Mildenau, I think, one of the two, and uh, one of the tracks he uh, knocked himself out. So, yeah, so he tried He tried to be there, but he was never very good, apparently. So um, I'll take his word on it. And obviously, then he, he went into, he, he used to go to Exeter a lot, and he ended up being the mechanic for Mark Simmons. And then Mark moved to Plymouth when it opened in 2006, and Dad said he wasn't going to get involved, but sure enough, he got involved. He, he I think he started off as an, a machine examiner and then he went down and then he was mechanic again for Mark Simmons and then in 2012 he became team manager. Um, and I think that's when I proper started like, being able to ride the track. So, you know, from 2012 on like a little peewee all the way up to where I am now, I've kind of been riding speedway. So, Is it a... A drop of luck that Dad became team manager, maybe. Um, but <laughs> yeah, here I am. How do, you, how do you find it working with your dad in that sense? I mean, some people love having the family involved, and for some people, it's it can be uncomfortable. But I'm guessing he's a good support for you. Yeah, I've seen. Um, sometimes there's a bit of friction in the pits between me and Dad um, when you know I come in from a bad race, and yeah, you know, he wants me to do well and. I want to do well and I've come in and I've had a bad rest and there probably should have been something I could have done and I know about it and he's pointed it out and I've got annoyed at him but yeah obviously me and dad we, we've got a strong bond with each other so you know I had a meeting where I shouted at him a few times and when I pulled myself down and then you know we acted like nothing happened so yeah obviously some people can't work with their, their dads in the pits but you know if dad's if dad's my only option, I'm going to use him. You know, he's probably the best support I can get um, for free. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously he, he knows what he's doing and he knows what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, it's a good uh, good atmosphere and pitch between us. Good stuff, Lynn. I'll bring you in if you've got anything. Sorry, I can't see you because I'm on my phone today. All right, okay. <laughs> you can't you can't see me, right? So, then you. Your girlfriend's been doing something a bit different, hasn't she? She's my girlfriend. God, I've forgotten her name now. Recording for The Voice. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't think so. Not anymore. No? No. <laughs> Well, Lynn's probably dug something up you don't know. That's what she tends to do. You might find that out later. It's probably something in the past I don't even know about. Right. I'll dig around, I'll dig around. Wondered if she, if, she, if she said anything or whatever. But, um, so, uh, how, do, how do you find it? Making friends outside Speedway. I mean, I know you, you've, you've still been at school. Um, yeah. So, you love your, your school friends. How do you find it when it comes to like socialising? Because you're here, there, and everywhere with the speedway. Do you yeah, still get so time to do do other stuff? Yeah, so I mean, that's what I've always said. I said it's so hard just to like keep in contact with people, and you know, if I if I want to meet someone down, so down where I live, down the summer, um, you know, I kind of like message people. Oh, what are you doing during the week? And they're like, oh school or work I'm like oh, what are we doing on weekend I'm like going to Scotland or going here there and everywhere you know um there's always somewhere I'm gonna be so 
you're trying to keep in contact with friends it's mostly over the phone and you know if i can meet up with them then i i, I will but obviously now that i'm injured yeah it's quite it's quite a little bit easier for me because obviously i'm not racing i'm not cleaning bikes i'm not preparing bikes so yeah obviously speedway you kind of do get cut off a bit from your mates and stuff but yeah, all the speedway lads and that understand it. So, you know, we're on FaceTime, like playing Xbox, or we'll be in the workshop and we're just FaceTiming each other, just doing bikes on, on call, just, just to try to lighten the mood a bit. Yeah, because I think sometimes the, the, the older generation, like, like myself, um, they don't quite understand how important the online community is to, to, to young people these days. You know, um, my, my my father, I know I'm old, I still have a father alive. He came round to watch uh, the Speedway of Nations semi-final um, with me. And at the same time, I was on the Discord server with all yeah. the guys. <laughs> and he's going, what are you doing? Oh, I'm talking to somebody in Sweden, I'm talking to somebody in Poland. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that um, you do it as well. And the other night you were, we were on the Discord chatting. And you were you were gaming with the Cornelia in Sweden and yeah and Ruth down in Birmingham and, and what have you. And to to me it kind of was an alien concept, but I'm starting to get it. And do, do you find that that helps a bit with isolation? Yes, yeah, so obviously um, you can't obviously without the internet you wouldn't you wouldn't meet a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have met you guys. So well, might have done in the future, but. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't be saying talking to you guys. So, um, yeah, obviously the online, uh, the internet, the online like services and stuff are, are good. Obviously, not only can you use it to make new friends, like I've been doing on the Discord server, um, but obviously you can use it. It's obviously Facebook, Instagram. Obviously, that's basically so many. Like, if you're looking for sponsorship, they they look through your social media and see what you're doing to promote. Um, which is why you see the likes of Ty Wolf and Dan Dooley and all that promoting stuff on their page as much as they can. So obviously Monster, um, Fire Oil, like all these different things that, you know, all their different sponsors, they're trying to promote them. Because obviously, although the sponsors want you to do well and they want you to succeed in the sport, they also want... Um, they, they, they want, want exposure. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So they they want they want to be shown off as well. So uh -huh. obviously the, the online part of it is so big in in Speedway. Obviously, where did we go? We were doing online. We were talking about online. Oh, when I was doing the Speedway chat show with um Jerry and Will Hancock. Yeah. You know, that that was all about boosting your social media to try and gain new sponsors and stuff like that. So yeah, obviously you can use it to stay in contact with friends and make new friends online but I can also use it um, in likes for my racing as well so it kind of works hand in hand and it's it's always worth actually double checking your social media what's your date of birth? <laughs> 27th of May 2006 not 2000 then? that's so I can look at the Facebook marketplace <laughs> <laughs> right, I get that. The thing is, um, if a sponsor looks at that, it's maybe not quite so important yet, but in a couple of years, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, changed, I've changed it before where I tried to put it back because I, I was 32 one year, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I changed it and I was like, mm. yeah. I'll just put it there just so I can look at the Facebook marketplace to see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, that's fair enough, but I understand that you can actually get away with not putting your date of birth at all now. Yeah, and you and and now not, you can not change it as well. So, yeah, so not, obviously, it's 2000 now, but when I turn 18, I can change it back to 2006. So, yeah, you know, Facebook aren't very good at not letting you be your right age, but, you know. Well, they're trying to take <laughs> you. I found a way. And to, be, to be to be fair, Lynn, you're you're only like an address or a bank number away from being able to clone yourself as uh, as Ben now. 
<laughs> I don't have a bank yet, so I'm not old enough. <laughs> no, it, yeah, so, yeah, I forget England's got different rules in Scotland. In Scotland, you can have your own bank account from the age of eight. <laughs> I would no. have no money. <laughs> No, but it was um but from a sponsorship viewpoint, what I was thinking is um it wouldn't be so good for like a cider company or, or something to come in and go, yeah, yeah. Yay! Can't, why don't you promote us by drinking our cider? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'll just say I'll get my sister to do it. <laughs> that's true. Serious, serious. She recently turned 18, so I can say, yeah, I'll get my sister to do it. Yeah, she, she goes Speedway with Darren Plumer and sometimes shows with us as well, so I'll get her to drink it and stuff. <laughs> and you, you've, been, you've been out in France racing this year as well. France? Uh, we went to Germany and Belgium. Um, yeah, sorry. I looked yeah, at Belgium and saw that. France but because it, it's close. That, yeah, that was a good experience. So, the one in Germany was uh, an FIM Open meeting uh, that I got to get un under 21. So, uh, me and Drew Kemp were the only GB boys out there. You had um, uh, some of the, you saw them on Sweden Nations GP2. Um, there was Fre uh, James Pearson, Fraser Bowles, Keenan Rowe, uh, Selena Liebman, the uh, yeah, Speedway. She was there. Um, I've said that she did beat me, but that's because she's very quick. Um, Norik Glordon was out there. So, yeah, there was a few, like, known and big names, um, which, yeah, it was a good experience for me. A um, whole different league to you know, British youth or National League. You know, you get over there and they're like, they are like championship, premiership in England. So, yeah, they're, they're quick, so I was kind of used it as a learning experience. And then um, I think it was a few months later, we went to Belgium, which I, I went to Belgium in 2019 on my well, one too far. Yeah. So, so it was a whole different experience on the 500. And, you know, when I practiced, felt good. Um, went at, went over to the like the bar social area afterwards, and yeah, we were speaking to the track staff, and they said, you're looking quick, mate. Um, I think you have a chance at tomorrow. I was like, ah, oh, cheers. I just kind of just like, like, socialised with them. I think we were in there for a good few hours talking to them as well, like, just about different random things. And, you know, we got to race day and I had a second behind, I think he had 14 years out of the sport. I'm on cut. Is it Lars? I think. Lars and, um, yeah. Well, I think he had 14 years out of the sport and he came back in. So I dropped the point to him. And then the next race, I was against Mick and Maya, who's been doing a lot of the long track stuff, um, which he didn't do practice the, the, the day before. But they said that he was the pre meeting favourite, so I thought we got to beat him. But yeah, it was, it was a bit of a wet track, that, that second ride. And, you know, I was third going into the bend. I ended up cutting back on Jeffrey Saibesmo and just trying to find the, the right line. And I ended up catching up to Mika. And then the last two rides, I think, two or three rides, uh, I won the, won them all. Mm. And I beat Mika again and then went into semi-final one, which I won off gate. I think and then I went for the same in in the final and it's a bit of a controversial final really because I made a good start you know I was leading and then Mika passed me down the back straight around the next corner and then I closed up again went to the inside hit a hole lifted came across and we, we hit coming out the corner and you know of being like all like tangled up with my own bike and then but you know kind of the control kept going and then Mickey fell off the next corner and the referee didn't really know what to do so we said all fall back so I was like no so I went and argued my case and they said they were going to obviously all fall back and they weren't going to exclude anyone and then I argued my case and so well dad wants to take credit for it 
take credit for it, so, so, so I might <laughs> give it to him. But yeah, I've seen that the referee then changed his mind and included Mika. So I'll give it to Dai because he said he said that he did something that I wasn't there. So I, I got myself ready and yeah, I just kind of dropped the clutch and got my work done and checked us out a little bit. Yeah. No, no, go on. Oh, well, I was just, I was just curious, really, uh, Ben. You know, you, you were kind of saying about the level of some of the riders you were up against there, some kind of championship and premiership. Um, what do you think are the main differences? You know, when you look at those guys and you see them at that level, but you're able to kind of get close. What do you think are the main differences that you need to close up to get to that kind of level? Because we had James Pearson on not long ago and. You know, he's doing okay at Birmingham and he's still kind of very early in his career, but there's a gap to get up to, you know, like heat leader level or whatever. But what do you see as the main things to close up to, to improve? The more track time. That is it. The more track time you get, the, you know, the more confident you get on the bike. You, you obviously understand what your bike's doing, what you're doing. Uh, you, you understand your limits and, you, you know, you can push past them. Um, and that's all down to track time and you know, the more track time you get, the more confident you get. And you know, confidence is the, the key of speedway. You can't go into you can't go into move far parted. So the more confidence you've got, the, the better you're gonna ride. And that that is all down to track time. So th that is your only answer to that one question, I think. So is what it is. Do you, do, and do you think the mental side of it is big? I mean, we're talking so many other sports about the importance of the mental preparation and obviously being able to be resilient and bounce back when things don't go well. Do you think there's a lot of that in Speedway or, or room for that to be bigger? Yeah, obviously, um, part of Team GB, that they focus on that quite heavily. So they're, they're saying, you know, you need to put yourself under pressure to be able to perform under pressure. So... Basically, you have to go into a meeting thinking you know, this is going to be a good meeting. I like this track. Whereas if you go into the meeting a bit sceptical and a bit nervy about either the track or the riders are riding against you, you know, you're going to have that in your head the whole time. E even if you're not thinking like it, it's going to be at the back of your head and it's going to be telling you like, you know, you can't do that, mate. So, yeah, obviously you have to go into a meeting open-minded, happy to do everything and you know, you, you can't back down from anything. You you have to go full, full gas from the start. Hey, you, you, you seem to do a fair bit. And at this stage, your career is probably quite right. You start off and you're a bit stuttery, but you tend to come good towards the end of the meetings. Do you think that would be fair to say? Yeah, I've seen... Um, me in like you I've got a little bit well some riders get nerves um I would say I do a little bit um depending on the meeting um but obviously yeah obviously starting the meeting you see some riders they struggle with their form and you know by the end of the meeting you know they're flying so but that's just that's just down to them obviously getting used to the track getting the set up and having more confidence so it, it might be a slow or you have some riders start off well they drop off at the middle of the meeting and then they go back to a different setup and you know they're flying again. So it's all down to their bike setups and their confidence going into the into the meeting and throughout the meeting it's obviously your knowledge and your confidence is getting better. So it's all that it's all down to that. Right, because the, the um I think I've mentioned to you before, I I I've been following the junior championship and my father and I were at Glasgow. In fact, you've got us in one of your videos. Um, you'll be able to spot me next time. And uh, my dad was said, oh, I thought he'd do better talking about yourself in the first cut. And then you came out and just smashed it. Yeah, I've seen that was a weird weekend for me, really, because um, I like Edinburgh as a track as well. Because it was Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, yeah. when Edinburgh first and Glasgow. Then Glasgow. No, I like Glasgow Edinburgh. saw you at. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm in to Edinburgh too, but my dad came to Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously I went, I went to Edinburgh and I like Edinburgh and I had a shocker of a meeting. I think I scored seven, I think. Uh, I didn't score very well. I don't think I even had a race win. Um, but obviously then I went to Glasgow and I, I, went, I think I had a second and two thirds. So I was on four, I think, four, seven, ten. Yeah, I was on four from... 
three, I think. And, you know, I was sat in the pets and I said, I need to, because at this rate, I, I can't myself at the, yeah. uh, at the final. So I was like, I want to at least win it, finish on a win. And then, I think I get one. I'm not sure. And I, I made a good gate and, you know, I got out of front and I started finding my lines and felt quick. And then I think my last race I saw, I was off gate four, made made a brilliant start. I was gone, and then Sam McGurk fell off, so we had to rerun it. Made a good start again, um, ended up winning that one, and, you know, I felt quick. I was like, oh, my God, like, came in the first and said, Dad, we're winning the final. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I just felt nice on the bike. I felt quick, and um, obviously, got to the final, they were like, gate pick. And I think I was gate pick in the end, so... I went gate four, I was like, right, going to make a good start and figured there were too many starts off gate four. Like, I dropped the clutch and I went, no, when, okay, no no discredit to the, the track or the track staff, but the track was so dusty due to, I think, 30 odd heats and it was so hot that day that, yeah, the, I was behind, I couldn't see anything. It was like riding with my eyes closed, it was so dusty from, from the back. So, you know, I don't know who won it. I think Sam won it, didn't he? Um, yeah. so he, I think he had the he had the best view of the track, and I thought he had the worst. So, so down to like that is like the start as well. Really, if you if you, if you make a start and you're out front, you have more confidence. And if you sat at the back for a race, you lose confidence. So, yeah, you know that was a weird meeting for me, and just kind of learned from it, so I can use it for the next time I'm up there, which. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because um, I was talking to some of the track staff after the meeting because it did get so dusty in that you went round in the first lap and when you came round in the second lap, the dust cloud at Benz 1 and 2 was still there. So yeah. it then got churned up more and more. And, um, and I went up to the referee's box at one point and I'm saying, can you actually see them? He said, I'm counting them in, and I'm counting them out. <laughs> you know, one, two, three, four went in, right? <laughs> four came out. And there was, there was one time somebody went down in the middle of the dust cloud. And it was, it was they'd gone almost the whole way around the track before the referee realised only three had come out of the cloud. But the track staff wanted to water. But there is a little bit of concern when, when you're a bit younger that... Um, when the tra track's just watered and doesn't really get time to soak in, that it can be a little bit slippy because yeah. that 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 was we did that when Super Sam um, yeah. when did he went out just after it was watered yes and he went out just after it was watered and I know all the people at the track staff there and they were kind of beating themselves up and going maybe we shouldn't have done it and yeah. after that they've said no so no matter how yeah, well, it, they don't want that I mean you, you, know, you know we're talking about tracks in a minute and you know having a slick track compared to like a water one or a gravity one but mm -hmm. with with the youth um, I think when they get to like obviously we're talking about the, the the gap uh, earlier, weren't we, from the, from the jump? Um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's so crazy to see the tracks that we're riding on, obviously, like, whether it's a main, like, like Glasgow, where we had our own meeting, or uh, the likes of Scunny when it was after a meeting. And, and yeah. you know, we don't get a, a fresh new track, track really. Um, I mean, I think we had Glasgow, Red Car, and... I think we had Edinburgh as well. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, there's so many different gaps from being slick to then grippy. And, mm -hmm. you know, that that's that's the change when you get to championship. Obviously, National League is still pretty slick and then you get championship and it's a completely different track to what you used to ride on. I, I, yeah. noticed, I, I noticed, Ben, when you look at the averages for you guys in the National League at Plymouth, oh. um, now, I know there's not loads of meetings away, but your heat leaders, you've all got kind of slightly better away averages than home averages. 
I don't know if that's yeah. something you've ever talked about or whether it's anything around the Plymouth track. I don't know. I've been told about the because obviously we're going to the um the the uh, thingy later. So I'm just being told that we need to get in there. And it's to, to the um to Plymouth Argyle to go promote speed there. I'm just being told that we're going to make a move, but I I can still do it in the running side. So I'll be good. Okay. Um, it's, <laughs> yes. So um. About rough track now. Oh, You're talking about the different tracks. Oh, the averages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The averages and way averages. Yeah, obviously, um, it, it's a difficult subject. Obviously, talking about um when you're home and and you're away. But I think that's mainly due to we've done more away meetings. I think um at this rate. I mean, I've seen. If you look at our away form, we, we've been struggling all season with you know, injuries and people being out for certain reasons. And you know, we got hit hard with Dan Dukes being injured. And I've seen Henry left and we were left to fill that gap with a three pointer. So um, obviously, we tried, to, uh, we tried to cover up with our three pointers, but you know, they, they just weren't up to the skill level of what Henry was. So, obviously, we, we, we used what we could with Matty, obviously, making decisions. And, you know, we, we ended up getting Ben Phillips quite a bit guessing, and then we, we obviously signed him. But, obviously, now, now he recently got injured and he's a face and with Adam. So, I did... Uh, to lose anyone and I think everyone just kind of glues together at that point um, to try and create a team with what we've got. So, you know, I think we, we mostly pulled a wet, pulled better average because we had to fight so much harder. So, obviously, mm. obviously our, our boys didn't understand. Obviously, our boys, we go we go around well, well Plymouth pretty well. So, um, Obviously, to go to another track where someone else has got a home advantage, you know, we have to fight even harder and obviously try to cover up for the points that, you know, Dan or Henry might have scored. So we need to try and fuck up our ideas and score as many points as we can away from home so that we have more chance of winning. And is there much of a connection, you know, between the championship team and the National League? Do you kind of do much together and work together and stuff? Yeah, so obviously, obviously, yeah, so we're trying to all work together. I mean, obviously, when we're, like, I go down to Plymouth's local to me, so, you know, we go down there on a race night and, you know, we're make, I'm talking to all the championship boys and, you know, the likes of, like, Hans Anderson and all that down there, Michael Palmtoff, you know, these guys have been in the sport for probably before I was born. So, um, yeah, so obviously, you talk to them and you try to get advice off them and even... Even at meetings, I've like been at meetings. Uh, I ended up. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I ended up calling Richard Lawson for some help, and you know he was happy to help me uh, while I was at the track, and he was at home. So obviously, I'm trying to get advice from riders that are more experienced than me, and trying to do what they say although sometimes it can be quite hard obviously I've only been riding or racing speedway for four years now I think I started in 2018 racing um before that I've just kind of riding around Plymouth week in week out and you know I've never really seen a big track <laughs> so yeah obviously I'm just trying to learn teach myself and obviously try to get experience from uh the older and more experienced riders it segues nicely into something, Ben. So we've had Alfie Botel on just the other week and um, I, I messaged him earlier because obviously he's, he's hurt at the moment. So just kind of wishing him luck, really, and, and hearing how he's going and how it's all looking. But I said to him, do you, have you got any questions or comments for Ben? Because Ben's coming on. Now, do you think he was kind to you? <laughs> um, well, I did tell him about it. I asked him the question about falling off. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So, so his no, question no, no. was... His question was, and, and it was tongue-in-cheek because he doesn't want to upset you, 
But he did yeah. say, why, why, why does Ben look fast in practice, but then doesn't look fast when he's racing in the in the meeting? <laughs> Everyone looks fast in practice. You're on your own. You're on your own. You have more room. You can do what you want. But um, yeah. Obviously, practice. I'm trying new setups, and then you get to a race meeting, and there's a little bit more pressure on. So, you know, I don't think I look fast in practice. <laughs> no, no, obviously you're you're on track with you by yourself, so um, you know it's hard to judge how fast you actually look when you're on your yeah. own compared to you know four riders that are you know maybe better than you or like same level as you. So obviously it's hard to judge where you are, but obviously hopefully I'll look fast in the practice soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously he was pulling your leg, but the good leg. He wasn't pulling the other one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're opposites right now. So I've done my left leg and he's done his right leg. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do a three-legged race then. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, a two-legged race. No, if you strap two half, half-fit legs together, it'll work. Yeah, I've seen the race I'm in now is pretty, pretty good. Um, but it's basically just like a hinge, so it doesn't, I can't like move my leg to the side. I can only bend it, um, like straighten out and bend it. I can't like twist my knee or anything, which is probably for the good because obviously that's I have two screws in there, and then I've also done quite similar to what Alfie's done. Um, but I've sprained my ligaments in the other side of my knee, so. It's kind of like a mixture of everything, just trying to rehab, rehab, recover, and then obviously get stronger. And you're getting help with that from the Team GB, aren't you, I think, in terms of that yeah. recovery. Yeah. Is that a good setup, Danny? I mean, we've heard loads of really good things about Team GB and how they've made it more professional and supporting the younger riders. Is that something you're seeing and getting the benefit of? Yes, obviously, um, it's my first year being part of Team GB set up um so you know when I first went there I was a bit like like just trying to learn what's going on and you know try and get right get right in um I didn't want to waste any time getting involved so yeah I've seen that they're becoming more professional and developing what they've got and obviously now they've got the case of GBO became world champions in the Speed of Nations last year. Is it last year? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, they're, they're saying that and they're saying that they can bring them on because they work with Ty, Dan and well, all, all of the senior uh, GB lads that, you know, they're working with them all the time so they can relay what they're learning off those boys and bring it back to us so that we can, so we can use that as well. So, we've been working with Steve Williams uh, who's the GB physio just to try and get some more um, advice on what to do with my need to speed up the process. Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's a good setup. Lynn, did you have anything else before we go to the five ride maximum? No, I think, I think we'll go for the five ride maximum. Okay, let's go for the five ride maximum. So, so Ben, we're just going to ask you, we're going to take turns, we're going to just ask you a question each for three points each. Uh, and, and hopefully you, you'll carry off the form five round maximum at the end. So uh, if you're ready for this, the, fir the first one, it's, um, it's all really about your own preferences. And, and I'm just wondering whether you have a favourite either track or stadium. So is there anywhere that really, you know, is your favourite in that terms? Favourite track or stadium? Mm. Well, it doesn't have to be one that you've ridden. It doesn't have to be one that I've ridden. Well, I mean, I have two favourite tracks. So, that sounds weird, right? Because mm -hmm. I started off for, right, you're going to know from this, I started off for, then I went strong, mm -hmm. and then I went weak for one. But yeah, basically, just so I like Glasgow, it's one of my favourite tracks, just because of the shape, and obviously it's one of the bigger ones we get to ride as well. But then, also like, the track I rode out in Belgium, Houston Zolder, which mm -hmm. I do like those kind of like bit. I ride Plymouth and I love big tracks. I, I never used to like big, uh, small, small tracks, and I've always kind of been a big track man. 
ironic, but you know, <laughs> preference. <laughs> there you go. Three three points in the bag, and uh, missed the gate a little bit, but you recovered there in the end. You got around the the, the other guy. So three points there. Uh, over to you, Lynn, for the second one. Right. So the second one, I'm going to flip that in its head. Is there a track that you've ridden that you think, oh no, I'm going there again? I really don't like that one. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I'm pretty open minded to every track I go to. Um, I didn't used to like East One, and then I had a good meeting there now. I'm like, mm. I like it now. I've seen that they're not running. They might start up in the future, but yeah, I don't. It, you know, I'm pretty open minded to go to a track. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's really a track that I'm like. Hmm. Plus, you've had your you've had your kind of mental training not to worry too much about the tracks as well. So you you've probably got quite a positive disposition towards that, so that you don't get too down about any tracks anyway. I would imagine. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so well, there you go. That's six points. So it's you're making it look easy, really, at the moment. Yeah. Um, the, the, the third ride, then, so to get to nine. So um, it's, it's just really, you know, is there a particular rider that you find kind of most inspiring or entertaining? Is there anyone that stands out for you that you just kind of hold up and, you know, really kind of like watching? Or, or you know, or maybe they've been an inspiration. You mentioned Mark Simmons earlier, but um, I don't know if there's anyone else that you particularly like. Yeah, well, see, as you say, that I mentioned Mark earlier, I mean, all credit to him, he's the reason why I can ride for Mark. Um, I never used to be able to ride it on the 5, on the 125 either, but yeah, I just kind of riding around half throttle, not really doing anything, and Mark just kind of came out with me on a practice day, he told me, you need to do this, this and this, and, and you know, ever since then, I've just kind of been getting stronger around from us, but, you know, you can also link that to, I love watching Ben Barker around Plymouth. He's, he is just a different person around Plymouth compared to anyone else. You know, he, he, he take, keeps six at Plymouth against Oxford. You know, he came out the starts last and he, he came around, I think it was Paul Stark and I don't know who else. But yeah, it was just, yeah, I was sat watching, I was like, that is just magical. He, he looks like he's sat at home yeah, watching TV, just riding around there. You know? He makes it look so easy compared to what it is. So, you know, obviously Ben just around film with him, just, he's just, yeah, it's, it's magical to watch. Yeah, he's, ed he's very entertaining, isn't he? Kind of really fun to just, as an entertainer, just to watch him is really fun. Um, what's he like off the track? I mean, I, I know he's in the news at the moment. We won't go into that, but he's, uh, yeah. what, what, how do you find him kind of off the, off the track in terms of, you know, as a, as a, as a guy, as a bloke? Well, um, <laughs> well, I've grown up with Ben, really. Um, he's the reason I'm called Ben, actually. Um, he was 18 when I was born and, you know, Dad was working closely with him. I think he was riding at Trelawney at the time, and you know, I got named after him, so that's why I'm called Ben. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so off the track, you know, he's, he's like a big brother off the track, really, uh, to me. You know, he just kind of mess around and go do whatever. You know, he's so, he's so chilled out, track level. So I don't know about anyone else. A different story. That's a good insight. It's, it's interesting to know, you know, you, if you don't get to talk to these guys at times, then you, you can only read one side or hear different views. So it's quite interesting that you know him well and, and you, you know, it's nice. It's, it sounds nice. Didn't know you were named after him. So there we go. That's an exclusive for us then. Um, yeah. So Lynn, we're on, we're on nine points and um, ready for the fourth programmed ride. Okay. So youngsters of your age, right, you know everything, don't you? No. <laughs> so if you could do one thing to improve Speedway, what would you do? What would you change to make it better? What would change? The promotion. Well, not the promotion, but like the promoting side of it. Trying to, the the lack of it, yeah. Yeah, so obviously, you know, there's, a, there's so many clubs across the country that don't really promote Speedway. As much as they could, obviously, people try to, obviously, 
uh, you put it on social media and stuff. But you know, you we need like like the days like where I'm going now. Obviously, to Plymouth Bargo, we're going down to obviously promote Plymouth Plymouth Speedway myself as a rider and GB Speedway um, as a whole. So um, we need more days like this where you know you can go out, hand out flyers, talk to people. Um, because obviously, I mean, if you look at the crowds now, mo the majority of the crowd is older because you know people are like supporting it from you know when when it was really big back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, like when it was all big, and you know, England was the place to be. Whereas, you know, like now it's all moved over to Poland and it's all gone quiet over here, really. So if I was to make it better, I'd try and, you know, promote Speedway more to get more people, um, like, obviously, so they know about it and they can go down and watch. So, no, I, I try to do it as much as I can down here, but I think if more clubs can do it, then um, then that'd be good. Obviously, because I'm doing it today, tomorrow, uh, probably in the future again. So, you know, I'm trying as best as I can to sound local to me, but obviously... Across the country, I think more clubs need to do it. So, really, what you're saying is that you could do with one big national promotion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like even national league clubs, championship and premiership. You know, they could all have like, a, a, like obviously, this isn't dedicated to Sweden. This is more football, but you know, we're going down there because it's going to be a big turnout uh, for the football. So, you know, we're we're going to be there and hopefully. We get some more faces down down at Plymouth and get some more fans going. Excellent. Yeah, it's a great answer. It's a great answer. It's certainly a theme through a lot of our episodes about the future of the sport and promotion. Um, so anyway, that's twelve points. So you're in. Well, naturally, you're going to be picked for Heat 15. You've just you've just burned off four eight four race wins. So you're in Heat 15. Um, and uh, so your last one. Actually, it's quite a gentle one. Your last one. So I wonder if you can just think back to the first meeting, either the first meeting that you watched or that you raced in, um, and just what you remember about it. What sticks in your mind about it? First meeting, I would have gone. Dad, how old I would I have been to go to my first meeting? Yeah, I wouldn't have been very old, would I? Five, you reckon that old? Maybe. I was born in 2006, though. It was the same year that Plymouth opened. Um, yeah, Exeter. No, no, I never went to Exeter. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously, I don't. Yeah, well, you probably went, yeah, you I probably went when I was like a little baby, yeah, yeah. like a few months old or whatever. But well, maybe the first I, one you remember then, Ben. I think the first one I remember is probably when I was about 2012, maybe before. I remember watching the likes of Newport. Newport. No, I only remember Plymouth when I was younger. Obviously, sitting in the crowd while. Everything went on. Uh, I think there was two. I don't know why I didn't think. I remember watching. Oh yeah, I do remember. That. Yeah, the meeting. What meet? What year was that? Newport when Ben Barker uh, won it because there's pictures of me and my sister sat on wheelie bins against the fence, uh, watching it, and then after the. After the meeting, then I've got a picture of me and Ben in the pits, and he's got his like man of the match trophy or or the or one of his trophies, and he gave it to me to keep. But then it back, so I don't know where it's gone. But yeah, I, I remember that meeting quite well. Um, but I think it was the first time I went in the pits, and you know, I don't think Mum and Dad liked it very much because I was buzzing all over the place. So I was so excited <laughs> that I get, that I got to obviously Newport. We got. We sat in the bin, so we had a good view. And then, obviously, I got to go in the pits. And I think mum and dad must have known that that's what I wanted to do from then on in. So, <laughs> you know, um, I've always liked Speedway. You know, there's no doubt in that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, probably, probably grow, growing up with it, it's just kind of cemented, cemented it into my head. Yeah, and it's nice, really, you know, being a bit younger and knowing what you want to do. I think a lot of people don't really know what they want to do for a lot of their lives, never mind early on. So 
So, yeah, well done. I mean, that's the 15-point maximum. So you, you're at the pits gate, you're getting the bumps, the fans are cheering. All's good. So uh, so you did that. So I guess all that remains really, Ben, from, from certainly from my point, I'm sure Lynn will come in as well. But it's just a big thank you, really. It's, uh, you know, you're generous to give up your time. We're all really grateful for it. Uh, we do this because we love the sport and we just want to keep talking about it. And we want other people who maybe don't go to be curious about it and get them in as well. Um, so, you know, just the best of luck. I hope you get past your injury soon. When are you hoping to be back on track? Well, I mean, the hospital's advice said 7th of September-ish. But obviously, I don't want to wait that long. And, you know, I'm hoping middle end of August, um, I want to hopefully be back for the 20th the ride to ride the National League Riders Championship, but yeah. if not, I want to hopefully be back for the 5th, which is again Plymouth versus, or 10th versus Plymouth, um, just so I can get a meeting in before the under-21s at Birmingham the uh, mm. 31st. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, good luck with that, and good luck today with uh, Plymouth Argyle, and I uh, hope you get a lot of interest. Uh, it should be fun. Um, Lynn, did you want to say anything before we wrap? No, just thank you very much. I think as I explained to, to Ben Ella, what we're trying to do with this is try and get a lot of different viewpoints and not just have the, like, the, the same, old, same old people on all the time. So we're, we're looking at different ones. And thank you very much for doing this, Ben. It's been really good. No, it's, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Have and a great I'll day, see mate. You on the 23rd. Yes. Of August, yeah. <laughs> yes.